start recording because the fibers will kick in here in one minute. Okay, guys, gals, welcome. It's Friday. Open Q and A. You can do whatever. Uh, the the one thing we're gonna focus is, and I wasn't planning on this one. Yeah, the ground was freaking really hard. Oh, but it was cold enough there weren't really any bugs. But I took two showers afterwards to get rid of the campfire smell. Okay, so today is Friday. It's open Q&A, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you have charts, you can post them in. I'd prefer this one not take too long, because it really hurts for me to sit up right now. My pills haven't kicked in. I just took a shitload of Motrin. Um, anyway, what we're going to be looking at is the daily... Fibo, not the daily, the hourly FIBOs versus the current FIBO swing. I forgot to do that on Tuesday, so I didn't want to leave that on the table till next week. Next week I will be back full time. Vacation's over, my daughter's back. Uh, today is going to be a short day because we're going to go screw around at the parks today. And then Grandma's going to take her for a good portion of the weekend. Okay, so as we noticed, 705, the hourly FIBO support and resist has started to redraw which it's right here. And you can change the colors on these to whatever you want to make them fit your chart or your style. So let's take a look through it a couple charts and we'll see if we can find anything interesting. Uh, let me see if green shot's loaded. I don't know what I did with it. Let me try hitting print screen if it shows up. And, of course, it doesn't. Okay, so... No, 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 no. Let me just try something real quick, because I'm going to have green shot up so I can draw on the charts. If you have questions while I'm screwing around, just let me know. Green shot's running, it's just not there. <laughs> okay, well, um, screw that. Harder to trade. Yeah, Fridays are typically my day that, if you notice, I only trade um, the London session up until the beginning of the U.S., and I stop. What you'll see happen is Fridays are typically more of a trendy day, um, and then when U.S. lunch kicks in, it just goes dead flat. So Fridays, I trade till honestly, Central Standard Time or Eastern Time, 10 a.m. is my cutoff. Once 10 a.m. Eastern Time hits, I'm done. I go in and I review my charts for the week, and that is it. Fridays are my lightest trading day of the week. They are definitely harder to trade. Um, some people say they have better luck with them, but I do not. And as, as soon as U.S. lunch kicks in, you will notice markets are going to go dead flat. Let's see if I can get green shot to open up so I can draw on the charts. If not, uh, the hotkeys could... Uh, duh, duh. Okay, so... I was waiting for one more so I could get one more little block to, block to form so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Alright, let's do capture window. Open an image editor. Okay, hopefully this will work. Let me draw a square on there. Okay, so the current, and this is going to be looking at current FIBO swings, and I should probably have reloaded it, but the current FIBO swing, what we're looking for is the 0 to 100 area, and that's right there. Now, the hourly FIBO swing, which if we remember, the hourly is going to be, let me change the color on it so we can see, hopefully this will show up, the hourly FIBO swing on this one's going to be slightly larger. And if you don't get any of this, just ask me. But here's the hourly FIBO swing. So without getting too complicated, and this is just some general guidelines on how I use it. So if I'm looking at the chart and I see 
what do we have? The current FIBO swing compared to the last hourly range is is smaller, so we have a shrinking market. So that means if price approached the inner, which is the aqua line, if price approached these, that means that most likely that these are a little bit more likely to hold. Now, again, this is if you don't have a spike on the market, if the market's moving in just a normal average manner, we don't see anything out of the ordinary on the market. S a lot of people ask me, well, which one of these do I know to use? The 100 or the 127 to 161 levels. Let me draw just so you can see at the 127 levels. Uh, let's try those in... It looks like a bright-ass pink. We can't see the one on the bottom, but our 127 to 161 levels looks like they would be somewhere out about here. So we have three different levels there. We have our current, the hourly, and the 127 to 161. As the market pertains now, what we'd be focusing on, the 100 ones are more pertinent. They're more likely to be what is held. Reason being is our current swing is smaller than the 100 swing. If this swing here, the current swing, was bigger than one, the 100 swing, then most likely if it hit the 100 area, we wouldn't take the 100 area into account as much, and we'd be looking for price to hit the 127 to 161 area. Um, that's just one example. Does that kind of make sense? I'm going to try and find a couple more and do it, but... Let me just save this file. And I'm sorry I'm sniffling. I really am just dying today from being outside for two days. It was fun, though. So let's take a look at one more. Let's see if we can find one. It's a little different. I'm looking for one that the current swing's actually bigger than the this one. I don't know if I'm gonna find it. Zero to one hundred. No. Zero to one hundred's too tight. Uh let's take a look at this one. Even though it's a little bit offset, it still will be a half decent example. So let me take a picture. Okay, so what we're comparing when we want to look, I'll try, I'll try and explain it again. Here's the current. Current FIBO swing is a current market condition, and we're only focusing on the size of the 0 to 100. So, you see how I've highlighted just the 0 to the 100? That's the current FIBO swing. So, we already know that the zero levels are important, the 100 level is important, the 161 level is important. Now, people ask, well, what does this, but where does the hourly come into it? You can use the size of this because this is the current market conditions, the current swing of the market. These are the last hour's market conditions. So if, and just for the hell of it, this square here, how does it compare to this, if I put it right dead in the middle of the hourly swing? And remember, the hourly swing is, and I'll draw the hourly swing. This is the hourly swing, if I could draw right. Here's our hourly swing for the 100 level. Okay, so you see where I got the size of the pink square from? It's the 0 to 100 level. And if I compare it to the size of the hourly swing, is the market contracting or is it expanding? Now do you see what I mean by how I'm using the current swing versus the hourly, or the previous hour, I should say? Now let's look, we have three levels that we're looking at. We have the current, the 100, and in this case it does not apply, which would be the 161 to 127, so actually I'll just leave it be. So what were we, how does this help us at all? <laughs> Am I smoking crack or does, the pink one, which is, let me move it, the pink one, which is this, it's the 0 to 100 level. If we stick it in here, it means that the current swing is smaller than the previous hour swing. So if the market is moving normally, we haven't had news drop, we don't have any spikes or anything, 
what levels would be more what levels on the hourly then would affect the market more if price hits the 100 levels then they would actually apply to the price movement if and this is an example if this one then is bigger because this will happen that the current swing is bigger than the previous hour swing if the current swing which is pink is bigger than aqua which is the current at the previous hour swing what levels would you think we're gonna focus on then or which ones do you think are gonna hold up better let's go with yellow then these levels become more important the 127 to 161 levels become more important because our current swing which is the pink one is already bigger than our hourly swing so that's our hourly swing we would just boop because now that the current FIBO swing which it isn't I'm just trying we don't have one that does when the current FIBO swing is bigger than the hourly swing what we want to focus on is price moving to the 127 to 161 areas and this isn't all the time it's just something to help people out with the current market conditions we have an ex if it was that way we would have an expanding market if the current swing is smaller than the previous hour then typically we're gonna have a contracting market so if prices go out to the 100 level the first time they do it's gonna most likely it's gonna respect those levels basically my lack of coffee is probably not helping my ability to speak coherently but did that explain did, does that clear up a little bit for anyone how you use the 100 and 127 to 161 levels comparing it to the current levels or am I just useless today I can pick up another one if you want Here, let me see if I can find another one okay so 0 to 100 okay so here we have 0 to 100 and I'll do a screenshot let us get rid of everything else that's freaking on the chart before I take the screenshot well at least if the current is smaller we would focus on the inner levels let me do something real quick let's kill a couple things on here and regression cock this way the, there's nothing else for y'all to focus on but what's on the chart Yes, I freaking killed the. No, I didn't. Okay, so if I flip time frames and come back, it should be there. Okay, so. And now I lost the freaking 5 0. There it is. Okay, so this there's nothing on the chart we should be able to do this pretty easy so let me uh, take a picture capture window and open an image editor <laughs> okay so what we have this time and I'll draw the square again of the area I'll be looking at um, I think I was going aqua okay so here is the zero level of our current FIBO swing and here's the 100 level so that is our current FIBO swing. Now if we move this little box, just so you can compare size-wise, if we compare it to the hourly, it is smaller. What that means then is if we were looking 
at where price was going to turn around. This is ignoring all other levels. Just is saying we were going to trade and this is all we had right here on the chart. Nothing else. That's all we had. So since this box is smaller, which one would apply more to price reversing? Would it be this little box down here or this little box down here? Would it be the inner or the outer, basically? It's going to be the inner because, correct, the inner is going to pertain a little bit more because our current hourly swing is already f smaller than this. So we would be looking for to build confluence and we'd be looking to build confluence in this ugh, man I cannot draw we'd be looking to build confluence in this area because these really don't pertain too much unless we got a spike on the market and then we might want to sit and watch but with just normal and this is on a trending market with a normal market movements nothing crazy we don't get a weird spike candle or anything this is the area that price is expected to stay in compared to the previous hour is that going to work all the time? No, but if we can compare the market to the previous hour to this hour, and remember this, these are drawn off an average of the last hour, so that doesn't mean that one hour ago that's the market conditions. It looks at the conditions overall for the last hour, and then it redraws them. <coughs> Sorry. So these are normally without, and remember I keep saying is if the market doesn't spike out or we don't get any weird movement, these are normally pretty accurate if the market maintains its current movement. If we get a spike in the market, then this really doesn't pertain too much and it's not going to help too much. But if the market just maintains normal movement, these little support and resist levels are very good because it's an average of the last hour. You could use it to judge on a trending market. I would be a little bit more careful. Remember, on a ranging market, most of this stuff works really good. If you're on a trending market, it's a totally different ball game on how you want to be doing things. But yes, I mean, you could see here was this was a this is a trending market. But what we can see on this trending market, and I don't need to mean to get off subject, is we can see we're having regular pullbacks. So this would be a, a light to a medium trend for me. This could be still traded most likely on TA or with a little bit of just knowledge of pullbacks, you could trade this because we can see regular pullbacks. Price went down, came up, price went down, came up, price went down, and it's getting smaller, came up, price went down, and this might be our pullback right here and came up. Can you see that pattern? How we have, it's basically, you can imagine it as a stair-stepping market. On a stair-stepping market, which w would be like a light trend, you could definitely trade TA with a little bit of knowledge of pullbacks. You just need to be identifying where the pullbacks might occur. Um, I didn't get to do it this week because of it, but I'll, I'll upload the Ken Chow crap for y'all. It explains, it's very in detail though, I'm warning you, it is very, very in detail. It explains how to get these little pullbacks and help identify them. But for that, let's get back, let's get back to this one. I don't want to get too far off subject. When this, your current FIBO swing is smaller than your first, out, your inner levels of your hourly, these levels will hold up a lot better. Now, if, again, this was our current FIBO swing, let me delete this. Delete. If our current FIBO swing is bigger than the hourly, we should already know the answer to this one, but the levels that were going to be more pertinent then are going to be out here. Because if our price is already outside, and a lot of people don't see this because it's not going to be pretty like this. Take a look at, the, I mean, let's take a look at the chart for real. Here's the 0 to 100, so it's up like this. So here's 0, here's 100. If I could draw, man, I am messed up today. Okay, so here's our 0 to 100 area. Now just because it's above this doesn't mean it's breached it. All it means is that it, it's still smaller than the current hourly swing. So if price was up here, then I would look more to the 127 to 161 because we've already breached it. But if price is riding in the middle, then these two are going to apply. When I'm moving this over here like this, all I'm doing is showing you that this is smaller than the hourly. Does that mean so sin when this is bigger than the 127 areas because this is 127 to 161 127 to 161 they come into play 
We don't have any that are the current market conditions are expanding, but that kind of just shows all the market conditions right now before the U.S. Open, London's starting to taper off, and U.S. isn't open yet. Our market conditions are contracting. They're shrinking. So it makes sense with what's actually going on. Plus, we're on Friday, so you're going to see a burst at the Open where this is going to get a little larger for a bit, and then it's going to start contracting once we're through the, probably the first hour of U.S. Typically, that's what we see. Let me see if there's anything else. Does anyone have a chart, anything that they want to look at? Does anyone want to see another example? Does anyone have a chart they think might be expanding? I'll bring it up and we can take a look at an expanding market. We have an alert on AUD USD, so what do we have? Nada. <laughs> Again, if we look at it, here's our 0, here's our 100. So we have a really tiny current FIBO swing. So the 100 levels are going to be more important. What I mean is this zone here is more important because the current market conditions are smaller than the hourly. So does that help a little bit on how to use the hourly FIBO support and resist? I had a lot of people confused. Um, just a side note, 2.61 book, I will hopefully have out by the end of next week. Normans, could you send me your your uh, classification document again when you have the chance? When I, I freaking honestly, I cleaned out my complete downloads folder by accident, so I erased everything I had in downloads. Because I went to open it up and it said it couldn't be found. <sighs> Sorry, I'm sniffling. But... Does that help explain a little bit how to use these hourly support and resist a l better? It clears it up. A lot of people are confused, and I saw them using the 100s when they should have been using the 127 to 161. Remember, all we're considering is by the current market movement of whether this is, I guess you could say, a weak, medium, or strong level to add into your confluence. These are just current market conditions, and they're made to be able to help you build blocks on your wall to make your confluence a little bit stronger. So as we're sitting now, if price moved up to here, what do we have? We would have a Murray Math line, a daily pivot. Our current market condition would be 261. So that means that's pushing, pushing the current market condition. And then since we ha since the current market condition is smaller, the hourly, the previous hours, the 100 would come into play as a very strong level. You see how we can take a look? 261 is way extended on the current FIBO swing, and then it comes lines up with 100, daily FIBO, and Murray Math Line. All that kind of makes sense. Our institutional levels are there. Our current market condition pushes 261 because we have a contracting market, and then our previous hours right here. So if those all lined up, this area here, anything in this area would might be considered a good trade, depending on how it looks. Right now it's hitting 161, it's actually respecting it, which is odd for that small of a little FIBO move. But it's slightly overbought, oversold. Stochastics looks like shit, though. Anyone have a chart, anything they want to look at? Or am I going to be able to go sniffle in a corner and blow my nose everywhere? Actually, I'm going to head to Starbucks and I'll probably trade for a little bit. Okay, let me take a look at this one real quick. Oh, good lord, you're doing FIBO with TA, or freaking itchy with TA. Okay, so what's your question on this one? Let me move it over so everyone can see it. Let's zoom in a little. Boom. One, how do you like trading with this all on one screen? I've seen a lot of people starting to... Not a lot of people, I've seen a few people starting to do it. Uh, is is this trending slash usable for TA? Well, if you, let's just look at focus on nothing but the candles real quick if you can. We had a nice, not nice. Th see the candle sizes. What happens in this area? They're starting to grow and get bigger. So I'm guessing this was probably as London got into full swing. 
is it tradable? The only time I would really worry about not being tradable, if it's ranging but you're getting huge wicks, that would worry me. But if it's ranging, and you somewhat have a range here, price moved up to the top of the center of gravity, down, down, and it bounced a bit and it came back down. We do have kind of a range there. I mean, yes, it would be tradable. It's kind of hard to see. What's one of the other things you could check? Did levels hold? We have your daily open here. Daily open got banged and held, banged and held, and banged and held. Um, let's see, we have... There's a daily pivot. Price crossed the daily pivot, and it kept going through. Here's a daily pivot, and it pushed right through. So two out of the, here's another daily pivot and it held. So two out of three times daily pivot didn't hold. Over here, daily pivot. Okay, I guess let me explain. Look at the left side again. And let me, let me take a picture and I'll explain this one. Because it can kind of, it, right, it's showing you kind of what you need. Okay, so we know that the daily open's holding. Right, so up here daily ho daily opens holding your M15 just happens to look like it's lining up here too. Your daily open is also a shit ton of other support, so we know that's a very strong level. So if price hits up there, yes, it's good. We got a round number, a daily five. But I mean, you have a ton, a shit ton of support up there, correct? So up here, yeah, that's a good level. But let's look down here. What's our strongest? I guess you could say reason. We can find a daily pivot. We don't have shit else around it. And let me draw on the chart. Daily pivot here, what's it do? It fails. We're coming off a, a small market and we're moving into an expanding market. What happens when market sizes start to shrink or expand? They will ignore levels. Our expansion happened to the south. So let's take a look again. Here's the next time. And I'm going to focus on daily pivot only, just so you can kind of see what you should look at. Here's daily, daily pivot again. Was it ignored? Yes, it was. Market now is moving upwards. We're still what I would consider in an expanding market. We do get a pullback right here. We're not overbought, oversold, anything like that. So we could kind of ignore it because what we're looking for is to see if overbought, oversold is respected when it hits a pivot level because that's how we're going to be trading. So this aqua one, we're going to ignore that one because it doesn't have shit to do with it. As we come back down, let's take a look now that it looks like markets reached its, I guess you could say its current size. It's current, it's, it's done expanding. So it's either going to stay the same for a little bit or it's going to start to shrink. So what happens over on this side when it hits the daily again? Because we already know the top has such a nice heavy support and resist there. Up here we got enough support and resist that it's being respected. It doesn't matter where the market's contracting or expanding. It's got a shit ton up here, so it is being respected. What we're worried about is down here. So as we go in, here is a pullback again. And we are overbought, oversold. Not a pullback, I'm sorry, the range moving down. Daily pivot. Now this time it was respected. Price hits it again. And again, it's not overbought, oversold, but we're going to say respected. And then, even here, price hits it. Meh. Up, down, up, down. The the daily pivot, as you can see, the daily pivot's starting to hold its weight. It's This whole section now is starting to be identified, and the market is seeing it as a proper support and resist. Does, does that make sense, what we saw? We had a market here, and look, it wasn't moving that much. Market started to expand here. When you see the market expanding, the first thing you should see or look for is are the levels holding then? Because typically during um, when the market's expanding, the levels aren't going to hold. All you need to be able to again, this is all about identifying your market conditions. Is the market is the market holding steady? Is it expanding? Is it contracting? By the expanding contracting, then you should be able to use your previous hour FIBO support and resist to help you make a little bit more of a decision on should I trade that, should I not. Because if the market's expanding, cool, if the market's expanding, then what do you, you don't want to get into the inner portions, you want to wait to the outer portions. Does that help a little bit on it? Cool. Next question.
Oh, uh, this chart, the one that I just had up? Give me a sec. Or the Euro. <laughs> Okay. Type in your question. I'm going to go blow my nose real quick, okay? Because I can... I don't want to gross you all out. I'll be right back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, so what's up with this one? Next question. Sounds like somebody's trying. Okay, look at the first bullish candle that touched the daily line. It breached and then rejected, I've seen. Many times at price suspect these strong levels. Okay, so let me zoom out a bit. Are you referring to this one right here? Or are you looking more for the ones that pounded through it? Because I see we have a touch here, we have a touch here, and then we have this one that just busted right through it. Okay, do we have news coming? Sorry. Uh, hold on, I'm going to sneeze, I think. That no, didn't happen. Okay, so this candle here? Okay, so what was the question about that one? Uh, this one? <laughs> I hope she could take control of the damn screen. Okay. This one. Okay. And what was your question on this one? Ugh, now I'm almost burping in y'all's ears. It breached but rejected the, the strong levels. No problem. I'm just looking at it. I mean, before you answer, here, um, here's my thoughts on this candle. One, we're in a ranging market. Two, it closed below the previous bre the previous highs, so we still don't see indications that it's going to run. Three, we have a shit ton of reasons it's not going to go up. We have the daily open around number, the H4, M30, M15. Even a Murray Math line got picked up in that. It hit. Uh, we can't take a look at these because these don't apply. But uh, while you're typing, those are, that's my general thoughts on that type. When I see something like this, that the market's ranging and it's bouncing off an area that you can put so much. I mean, you basically have a brick wall right here. I will take this every time until I lose. Even though it's like a rule of three, because this was our one breach, two breaches, three breaches, four breaches. I would take it, and this is not TA related, this is m my personal trading style. When I see s a wall that heavy, that price is running into it, and it doesn't have to be overbought, oversold for me, I would have a trap indicator there. When I see that kind of confluence lined up, I would just take it every time. As soon as I could, I would try and take it at or above this line just about every time. This one, I would have probably been scared shitless. Okay, remember where did... Okay, you have a big wick, but where did it close? Did it close above or below? 
the This is where Itchy will come in handy for you, and let me do this real quick. A ranging market typically, you won't see a wa you won't see the huge run past the. It, it, oh my God! I sound like I'm losing my mind. Oh, hold on, let me do this so I can do it. <sighs> okay, so we have ranging market. I would have taken it every time. I would have set a trap on that and screw TA. I would have taken it once I saw when I see all this lined up, any times it touches it, I would have had a trap set here. And any time it would have taken it. And yes, the reason on the big whip, I wouldn't have I would have just taken it. Yes. I'm I know this is not TA related. Okay, if you're doing TA, I'm I'm going to I'm basically going to tell you personally what I would have done here. TA wise, if it was a fully core qualified, yes. One of the reasons, either way, I would have taken this, nothing closed above the daily line. If something closed above the daily line, it might be dangerous, but none of these are. They're getting, there's enough resist here that I wouldn't care. My entry would have been at the line or above. Um, I would have just taken it until I lost a trade, and then the next one I would have sat back and watched. I would have been a little bit more cautious, but... Look what we have lined up here. We have a solid round number. We have the daily open. We have H4, M15, M30. God knows what else is buried under there because there's another support. It looks like the hourly is buried under there. Everything's lined up that this is a brick wall. What I look at then, so I have a brick wall here. So what means... Now let's just think of this not stock market related. This is going to go to swing high, swing lows. First, before we do that, let's look at momentum. What do we have... Here's the itchy clouds. Is it showing momentum in one direction or the other for this? Any serious momentum? The cloud is flipping colors. It's going green, red, green, red, green. So since the cloud is flipping colors, do we have solid momentum in any certain direction? Because we're ranging. Even though it's an expanding range, we are ranging. So we don't have enough... Just momentum-wise, I'm seeing it as we don't have a shit ton of momentum anywhere. It's like a pendulum. It's swinging back and forth. Somebody just... Right here, the pendulum was dying out. Someone gave the pendulum a little push right here, so now it expanded. So here's our price hitting the wall. Didn't have a lot of strength here. Here's it hitting the wall again. Didn't have a lot of strength here. Someone hit the pendulum. It hit the wall here. It hit it, and it bounced off it. Now, why would I... What would you be looking for to be concerned about this? Price hit the wall and busted through and stayed on the other side of it. That would indicate price had the momentum to break through the wall and stay on the other side of the wall. So, I know people say support and resist a lot. Think, think of um, support and resist this way. So this is our wall right here, right? And let me draw a line and screw the... Think of a wrecking ball on a wall, okay? This is how it was explained to me a long time ago. If price, if the wrecking ball hits it, and the candle would be the wrecking ball, the wick would have been the path. If the wrecking ball hits price and goes through it, if it hits this wall and goes through it, but it doesn't stay on the other side and it comes back through, this is still a resist. Reason being is your, your wrecking ball is still on this side. Now, once price goes through the wall, and it stays on it, when price comes back down, what's it have to do? It has to hit this side of the wall and come back through again, so it has to break through the wall again. It's an easy way to visualize, maybe, of how support and resist works. Does that make sense to y'all? The candle not breaching through here means that it didn't completely bust the wall down, so the wall is still standing for the next run at it. If the, the wrecking ball makes it through the wall, which the candle closes on the other side of it, this support this resist then turns into a support because price or the wrecking ball is on the other side of the wall then here it went through it but it did the wrecking ball didn't stay on the other side of the wall it swung back through so let's move up think of it like a video game it moves up again and the new part of the wall is there again maybe that that's how i was taught it like a long time ago because i was thinking support resist it confused me a little bit but it was an easy analogy for me to understand was that the wrecking ball is either on one side of the price or the other and the the candle is your wrecking ball so depending on where your candle ends up is where the wrecking ball ends up at the end of the swing 
And once we breach that, that's when, if there's momentum, now remember, we have to look at, here's the wrecking ball doesn't have a lot of momentum. Momentum's building up. Now, if we're looking at a chart where Itchy is just solid up, let me see if I can load up an Itchy chart and we can take a look. When we want to be concerned about those type of things is when we look at Itchy. And let me just load up an Itchy template, because I only had, I wasn't planning on looking at Itchy today, but... Okay, so itchy here, what kind of momentum do we have? Our little wrecking ball is... It's going back and forth. It's green, red, green, red. Let me zoom out a bit for it, you to see. Here is when I would be concerned. You see this right here? This is when our wrecking ball would have momentum because Itchy backs up the momentum fact for you. It shows you a nice green cloud. So what would we be looking for is like here's our M15H4. Price came out and closed outside of the typical range here, but it dropped back down. Then it came outside again. That's the type of things I'm looking for. Go down. Go down on where? Sorry, I just saw your message. Let me go to some itchy chart just so we can look at it real quick. <laughs> Sorry, did I screw something up? Okay, so this is cable. Cable, what do we see? What was price doing until now? What's, what is price doing now? Can you see how now we should be worried about momentum and a breakout happening? The cloud is getting bigger. And remember, we have downtrend, trending lower, and we should be concerned about the price closing through a wall. That's when we want to be concerned. Um, when it's like this, remember, that's like just like a pendulum. It's going back and forth, back and forth. Even though it doesn't look pretty, Itchy's telling us we have no clear momentum. This momentum here, it, just by looking at the angle, so we'd have a definite downward market, but is the cloud getting thicker? No, the cloud's kind of maintaining size. And then it moves up and down. This is where we get scared, and it is a no TA type situation, and we look for pullbacks. The cloud is going down, and it's getting thicker. It's getting bigger. So that indicates for us momentum is increasing downwards. So that's why it's good if you have, if at least have itchy up, at least it'll give you an idea about momentum. If we were looking to take a trade here, and here is the pullback but no confluence on it, or it might have at the time, who knows. But here is a pullback, that would have been a good one down. Remember, you're not always going to get a full pullback, so you might not be able to use like my style of method trading for itchy. But once you see this, you can consider trend trading however you want to do it. But when we don't see these strong momentum moves downward, and yes, you might get caught at the beginning of one, but once it's something like this is formed, you should be aware that there's a strong downward momentum. Here, let's template. Okay, so here's a TA chart, and then we're going to look at it itchy real quick. This one is ranging. It's taking, what, one, two, three hours to come all the way back down, but we have an up, and an up again, and then downwards. So it's somewhat ranging. So you're not too sure about this one. Let's say you're looking at it and you're like, I don't know what that one's doing. So take a look at it on Itchy real quick. Template. Jesus Christ, now my computer's saying arg. Forgot. And let's just do this. No, fuck that. Let's do this so we can get everything off the screen for you. We had here a slight momentum coming down. When you see this type of thing, we know we have momentum, but then it's breaking. The cloud's getting bigger, but... Eh. This one would be a little bit more difficult. This is Euro, just in case you're wondering. And remember I said on TA this one was kind of hard to tell what it's doing. It's ranging a little bit, but we also have a trend in it. This right here would have been, I would say, 
For me, this would indicate a medium trend. It's not a light trend because a light trend wouldn't be that bad. It's definitely not a heavy trend, though. You can use the cloud size to judge. This right here potentially could be moving into a heavier trend. What we want to look at, though, is our levels being respected. The M15 and the M30 are holding here, and they're holding here. If price comes down to here, this area here, when price comes down to here, if it closes outside this area with this cloud forming, that's when I'd be expecting price to move south. Because the cloud is getting bigger, and we're approaching back down to its 1, 2, it'll be hitting down here again. This is where our support and resist is. So I would be, if I was looking at a TA chart, now that I can see that on Itchy, when price comes back down to here, here's the same exact area we're talking about, right, this area down here. When price comes down to here, we know that we have a big red cloud here and that momentum is slightly form is starting to form. What would we be looking for? If price closes below this, then we'd be looking for it to possibly run. Does that make a little bit of sense of what... And I'll, again, it's not set in stone. You just need to watch price. If I got to this chart, I know that if price comes back down to that area, I want to watch price and see how it reacts. Do we have anything here in this area to stop it. We have the daily low and one Murray math line. That's not a very that's not a lot of confluence to hold it. Now we do know we have on the itchy the M30 and the M15. M30 and M15 I would still consider current market conditions. Once it gets up to the one hour, that's what I would consider more of a institutional type. One hour, four hour institutional traders are going to be seeing that. There's not many institutional traders who trade off of a 5, 15 minute chart. Even a 30 minute's pushing it a little bit. But we know we have 15, 30, a daily low, and a Murray math line at this area. Other than that, we don't have... For me, that's considered weak, especially since we know the cloud's getting bigger. That, and again, I'm not trying to really show too much on this one. I'm saying this is my thought process of what I see on this part of the chart. I see if price closes lower than this, then we look at a potential rundown. And when I say this, I mean right here because I'm looking at the bodies. If price closes lower than there, we have a potential rundown. If price hits it, then pulls back, then we're looking at it moving back up. The reason I see this as dangerous is because I know the cloud's getting bigger in this area. I'm not and I can't really put too many institutional levels together there. Any other questions or anything? I'm trying to keep an eye out to see if we have an hourly that's expanding bigger, but we don't. We had a couple people come in late. You want me to run one through... run? Ugh, fuck me. We had a couple people come in afterwards. Did you want me to show the current FIBO versus the hourly again real quick? On how to use these hourly FIBO support and resists? Uh, it doesn't show up because you don't have an ABC pattern. Okay, there's i would shown this before, but sometimes there's two ways to draw. There's zigzag, which the zigzag FIBO, those auto FIBOs that draw off zigzag, they will draw your FIBOs incorrect sometimes. The one that you have, this one right here, that's why it's called 1, 2, 3. It's drawing an ABC pattern. Here's our A, here's our B, here's our C. <laughs> okay, so... Real quickly, I'm just going to TA Daily FIBO, get rid of that, 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 that. Again, just to make it less confusing, let's kill a couple things on the chart. Okay, let's take our little picture. So again, this is going to wrap it up, I think, but our current FIBO swing, which is the current, is the 1, 2, 3. It's this column here. What is the size of it from 0 to 100? It's that big. And let's change the color for you. Let's make it pink. That's the current FIBO swing. Now here's our hourly, previous hours average FIBO, the previous average movement, averaged out. God, I, I'm making no sense at all today. 
Now, I am only going to move this just to show the size comparison. Here's our 0 to 100. Here's Here it is compared to the hourly, the previous hours. Jesus, I'm a mess. So compared to the previous hour, it is smaller. So that means compared to the previous hour, our range or the market is contracting. So if we had to decide on where to take a trade or which levels apply the most to us off the previous hours, FIBO support and resist, the 0 to 100 levels are more pertinent than the 161, as long as we don't get a spike or anything on the market. The if, and let's just, just do that again, let's pretend the current FIBO swing was and let's erase it. So we know now if this is smaller than this, these are more important. If the current FIBO swing was, and I'm going to pretend this is 0 to 100, uh, let's, that should do it actually. So it's matching up exactly almost. So all that means is that one, when it matches up exactly, it means the market is maintaining the current range. So we have three situations, I guess you could say. Current market conditions are smaller than the, the previous hour. Current market conditions match the previous hour. Or current market conditions are larger than the previous hour. So this is 0 to 161, but it's at, we're going to pretend it's 0 to 100. It 0 to 161 almost matches up perfectly with the previous hour. If we get the 0 to 100, though, that's matching up perfectly, this still means these will hold on confluence. But if we see a mark, if we don't have strong confluence here, we're going to wait for on the 161. Honestly, for me, when it currently matches, I do prefer. But we have the hour to back us up. It really depends on what kind of confluence. If it currently matches, I'm really going to be looking for a heavy amount of confluence. If there isn't a heavy amount of confluence, let's say it's a 1% a trade, I would expect it to push through out to here. So smaller, these pertain. Same with heavy confluence, it would be the inner. But without heavy confluence, just pass on it and wait for the outer. If the current market conditions are larger than, so this is our 0 to 100 range, the next thing we're going to look at, and let me just get back. It just redrew. Maybe we have one. Let's see. Let me shrink it a little here. This will get me more of the chart on there for you. Delete. Delete. And delete. So if we can get some more of the chart on there for you. Okay, so... Same thing, let's take a look at the size first. Remember, all we're looking at, size. There's 0 to 100. How does it compare to the current hour? So this is now the same size. Let me go to... Nah, here. Okay, so it's the same size and we have price moving up to here. Since we know the 1 hour now matches the 100, because it redrew a little bit and expanded, Ow. If price hit up here with good confluence, which we have a daily pivot, we have the zero here. So we know with the zero being here, if it hit here, we'd want it to come up to here. There's not too much confluence there, so we most likely, I wouldn't have anything there to trade off of. But back to this one. If it's larger, and since we have the whole thing here, we should be able to see it. So let's say our current range versus our hourly is like this. These two lines, whether price is... And remember, I'm showing it middled, like uh, grounded in the middle. 0 to 100 is up here, so it really... You need to make sure, because uh, it could be like this is the 0 to 100 range. And that doesn't match up too much with this one. But it still means that our what we're going to be looking at is the outer ones. Anytime price, the current FIBO swing is bigger than the hourly, 
we want to focus more in on this range and this range. If the current swing is smaller, then it's looking at these two ranges. That pretty much sums it up. Um, send me screenshots if you have questions about that as you use it. But that pretty much sums it up. If it's the same size, we look for heavy confluence on these, and if not, wait for it to expand out to the 161. But that pretty much sums it up. Any other other questions? It doesn't have to be related to this. Any other questions? Hopefully that'll clear up on how to use it. Um, like I was saying, Norm, if you could send me the, your little document thing. Next week I am going to be trying to finish up 2.61. This week I went overboard on spending time with my daughter. The whole camping trip was kind of unexpected. <laughs> but my friend was like, eh, screw it, stay. So I ended up staying for two days. Again, guys, if you have questions about a particular topic in the system or something else, all you have to do is ask me, and I will try and throw it into a webinar. I mean... The more you learn about different parts, like TA is a good base base for everything, but if you have questions on other things and it helps you to understand them, the more you understand about the market, the better you're going to do. And basically, eventually, it all clicks together. You get your little light bulb moment, and you understand what the hell's going on, and you'll do very well. So if you have questions, ask them. But other than that, ugh, I am going to actually go frickin' find some VIX so I can clear out my throat, my nose, because I cannot breathe. Um, next week we'll be back on the normal. Spring break's over for my daughter, so I'll be seeing everyone next week. And you all have a good one. I'll be in the Skype room for a bit. The other chat room's down today. <laughs>